All right, so in this video series, I'm showing you how to build a whack-a-mole app, you know, where an image jumps around, you can touch it and get a point. And all, right now, all I've got is I've got this image sprite, which is my a picture of my son, okay? And when the user clicks start, it just jumps to a particular place, okay? And in fact, the blocks for it um, just show that, you know, you have to change the X and Y coordinate to move a sprite around. X being horizontal, Y being uh, vertical. Okay, now we want to, you know, kind of make that image jump around, um, you know, randomly to random locations, and we want to do it where it keeps jumping around all the time. So in, in, in Thunkable, one way to do animation like that is with a timer component. So I'm actually going to go and grab a timer, and, and basically a timer is like an alarm clock. So I can make sap something happen over time. In this case, I'm going to make it want it to happen every let's just make it move every one second to start so i don't want to make it five seconds i'm going to make it one second yeah very important thing is make sure this loops property gets set to true and that makes the alarm clock go go off every one second instead of just just only once after a second and i'm not going to enable it till the user click start button so when the app starts enabled will be false okay so i've got my timer and I'm just going to go to my blocks and, you know, now on the start button, I don't, you know, I could just change him to go to one place here and I'll, I can just leave that right here if I want, but really what I want to do is enable my timer or start my timer, you know, so that'll make timer enabled true if, if you call start. Okay. And really the way the timer works is there's a very important event called timer.fires. So once the timer started, this event handler gets triggered over and over and over, you know, if that loops property is true. Um, but anyway, whatever we put in here is going to happen over and over. And what we want to do is, you know, we're definitely going to want to locate, um, you know, the, the sprite to a different, a different uh, place. Okay. And, um, you know, so I can, I can either, you know, I can use the set X and Y just like I was doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these guys. And of course, I don't want to set it to a particular place. So I'm not going to set it to 250 and 300. What I need is some random numbers. Okay. And I'll just do it simply at first. If you go up to math, there's a random integer block. Okay. And if I just kind of stick in, you know, from one, right now it's from one to 100. Um, you know, we, we really want it you know, however wide the screen is, but let's just put 300 in for now. And then let's put in, I don't know, 400 for the height. Okay, so right now I think every second, you know, Tomas, the image, the sprite's gonna jump around, you know, to somewhere within 300 on the horizontal and 400 on the vertical. Let's just test that out. It's not perfect, but at least, you know, I'm just giving you an idea of how this is gonna work. So notice he doesn't move at all yet, right? But when I click the start button, you know, every second he jumps around. Okay. And, you know, really, you know, we, that, that 300 the four and 400 is kind of not exactly how you want to do it, right? So if I go back in the editor and I can kind of look at my stage and, you know, the height is 450 and the width is 300. Okay, but I don't even want to use those numbers, right? I mean, I almost did. I almost got lucky, right? So I, if I would have put 450 in here, that would have been, been correct. Um, but really what I want to do is programmatically do it. So if my stage changes size, it'll still work, okay? So instead of 300, what I really want to do is grab a property from the stage. And there, you know, you'll notice there's no height and width showing here, um, but you can pull out any of the properties for stage and stick that in, just make sure you change it. And of course we wanna choose width for, you know, X is the horizontal location of the sprite. Um, and then we wanna get the height um, for this one. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna set these to zero to start. And I'll tell you a little more about that, those zeros in a second. But anyway, let's just, let's just test this code out now. And if I go back to designer, click preview, um, 
as soon as I click start, I think it's going to look about how it looked before. Um, but I think it'll this time it'll, you know, he might show up in this bottom 50 pixels, which before he, you know, he he wouldn't do that. Okay. Um, so anyway, we're we're getting pretty close. Um, in, in a later video, I'll I'll talk more about you know, how we can be a little more precise with our placements because because really the x and y is the center of this image. So like if we set the x to zero, um, really Tomas would be halfway off the screen, right? Because the x, you know, is is the center of the sprite. Um, so you you can be a little more precise, and, and and your formula can be a little more complicated to make it better. Now Thunkable does attempt to at least move him and keep him on screen anyway, uh, but anyway, I'll talk about that in a later 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 video. Okay. Anyway, in the next video, I'll, I'll tell you how to keep score.